several days before development. There's all trees just about, and when it rained, the water just fell on the forest, was absorbed by the trees, evaporated or infiltrated into the ground. And then as there was more and more development, that same rain was falling on pavement and rooftops and streets, and it started to run off going very rapidly into creeks and streams and causing a lot of damage. So as we did developments, we really needed to manage our stormwater. So one of the ways to do that in a typical you know, subdivision, suburban subdivision, was to build a stormwater basin. A detention basin is primarily used to manage stormwater for flood control. Essentially, it acts like a bathtub. So the additional runoff that's generated from impervious surfaces enters the basin. The basin fills up like a bathtub and then slowly drains out over time. And that is how the rate of the stormwater is managed. Detention basins are a problem because they really don't do anything to manage the volume of runoff. It really just captures that volume for a short period of time and then it allows that tremendous additional volume to discharge into stream systems with very little pollutant management. Also, the detention basins are designed to mitigate large storms. If you look at annual rainfall, the majority of storms occur in small storms of an inch to an inch and a half or less. So all of those frequent rainfalls essentially just discharge right through the basin and go right into the stream system. So it's really a lost resource. When we look at naturalizing a basin, we're trying to introduce vegetation, we're trying to restore soils and allow that water to actually stay in the basin and be infiltrated and evapotranspired by the vegetation and the soils. And that brings us much closer to a natural condition. What we're trying to do is get small amounts of water into the ground so they don't become cumulative larger problems downstream. And by naturalizing stormwater basins, we retain the water, getting the water back in the ground and available again for our use. If we flush it downstream, it's not available for our use later on. And increasingly, we're having water quantity problems because we're flushing the groundwater out of the system. What it means to naturalize a basin is moving basically away from a grass mowed fescue regime into plant types that are more diverse. What we don't want to have happen is water to enter a basin and exit the basin quickly. The minimum that we would do to retrofit a basin is adjust the outflow structure to make sure that small storms could stay in the basin we might do contour grading to maximize flow path, make that long, torturous route through the basin, and then we would vegetate with probably a warm season grass mix. What I would love to see all basins return to is forested basins. We have to remember that the tree is the best water pump that we have, so the more we can get large, plant material into basins, the more it will function as the East Coast used to function. The East Coast wants to be a forest. That's why we have to manage the land so heavily. It wants to succeed from meadow to shrubland to forest. The stormwater basins there's hundreds of them out there. They're scattered all around the watershed. A lot of them are in the headwater area. So the opportunity is there to better manage stormwater. So it's not like you have to go out and acquire land. And there's fairly straightforward modifications that can help improve that basin. The townships are obligated to manage the stormwater. And a basin retrofit would be one tool that they could use. When we work with municipalities, economic factors definitely play a role. That's why we've really been focusing on naturalization, because it tends to be a lot less expensive than more structural measures. We've seen a lot of people use volunteers to do plantings and look at very creative ways to save money in order to incorporate more expensive things like trees and shrubs. 
But there are also things that you can do very simply at a very low cost, such as just seeding the basin with a meadow mixture, or just stop mowing the basin and allow vegetation that's surrounding the basin to establish within the basin. So there, there are a whole bunch of things, you know, volunteering, yeah. and we didn't do anything except they stopped mowing. Yeah. As far as planning it and making it natural, there's a cost of naturalizing the basin. Where you save in the long run is mowing and man hours because of the basin's turf. You need to mow it, you need to keep it down. If I have to run mowers over top of it throughout the year, it's gonna slowly compact, then we have to come back and aerate it to make sure it's still open and absorbing water. By naturalizing it, I don't have to compact the basin, which leaves it loose, lets the water infiltrate easier into the ground. Now we don't have to touch it. We can maintain, keep the invasives out of it, let the native plants grow. You're definitely gonna save tenfold throughout the years instead of maintaining and mowing. Townships are finding that people like the look of these naturalized basins, that they attract wildlife, they attract pollinators like butterflies and different kinds of birds, which uh, people always find very attractive. Municipalities should start with the basins that are easiest to retrofit, that will cost the least amount of money to retrofit. If you can choose basins that don't need massive outlet structure reconstruction and that are in the places where people will accept the retrofits most readily. We try to plant woody material in clumps. With our state regulations and upcoming federal regulations for stormwater management, there are going to be granting opportunities. You want to look to people who are leading the way for environment and stormwater for grant retrofit opportunities. The other place to look is concerned citizen groups, everything from Trout Unlimited to local watershed groups, because they're the people who understand the environment, they understand water quality, and they want to be at the forefront of changes. Everyone thinks this is a top-down effort, but in fact there are lots of people out there that want change. Increasing stormwater oversight and rules and regulations is going to be a fact of life in Pennsylvania. What's going to be important moving forward is to figure out ways to incentivize townships to do what's the right thing. We have to learn to embrace our stormwater. Placing regulations, it's the first start, but I think there are ways that we can work with nonprofit organizations and state agencies to figure out a way to work it together so it's not a punitive function for townships. And the way the Commonwealth system is in Pennsylvania, the townships all act as individual entities. The regulatory system, it forces us to act together and to cooperate. We all live downstream from somebody else, and we have to figure out this collectively and not individually. The reason you should naturalize basins and think very differently about stormwater management is because we all ultimately drink the water. And if we don't begin to infiltrate it and get it back into our aquifers, which we pump out of for drinking water, it's a health and water quality issue.